It's been pretty surreal. You, you know, we always knew that that Coach Prime would bring talent to Boulder, four or five star players. And at the end of the day, this is a talent game. I don't think anybody could have predicted that college game day would have been here in week three, Fox noon kickoff, week three, uh, 11 million people watching the Rocky Mountain showdown against CSU, by the way, at 10 o'clock on the East Coast kickoff. Right. It's wild. And, you know, you can't even get hotel rooms here in Boulder, Colorado. Local business is booming. Profits are way up. More people are visiting. So his impact goes way deeper than just the football field. That's incredible. I actually hadn't thought about that. So he has really lifted up the entire community and, and everyone is really benefiting off of uh, the incredible job that Dion's done, it sounds like. The Chamber of Commerce here in Boulder predicted about $18 million of additional revenue for the Nebraska game alone. That's one weekend for the city, for the community of Boulder, Colorado, for the state of Colorado. So it's great for, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't care about football. Like, this is way bigger than football. This is local business. This is good for community. This is bringing people together. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Compare this year where you are now to what last year was like and only the one win and obviously a, a really bad season last year uh, with respect to those players. But what's the difference, Jeremy? Wait, there was a program last year? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I heard I they were that. one in 11. I didn't, I didn't watch, I'll be honest. I, nobody did. And, you know, even alum and supporters like myself, it was sad. And it's been sad for many, many years. I mean, for the better part of two decades, Colorado football has been irrelevant. There's yeah. been some moments, you know, Mel Tucker in 2019 sort of had the team going in the right direction. And then he left in the first year of his contract. You're like, oh, my goodness. And then it went back to, you know, just being, you know, there's no heartbeat. There was no pulse here in Boulder. Fast forward less than a year and you, all this attention, all this buzz, 3-0 and and the publicity and the money and the players um, it's it's extraordinary. I don't think any sport at any level in any in any field has ever seen something like this happen as fast as this is has done in Colorado. What, what where can the team go this year, Jeremy? I know a lot of people maybe get a little overly excited and start asking about things like national championships. It would seem like that's a, obviously a, a a lot to ask for for even Deion Sanders in his in just his first year with the team again that won one game last year. But what what can be accomplished? I mean, nineteenth ranked team in the country right now, three and zero. Some big time games coming up over the next three weeks. I mean, what's what is possible for this team? You know, with my CU hat on, I'll tell you anything is possible. National championship, but, but taking it off and just being an objective analyst, yeah. no, I don't think that's possible. I think this, this team's going to win, going to lose some games. They could lose yeah. this weekend in Eugene against Oregon. They could lose the following weekend against a really good USC team. Oh, yeah. This team has holes. I mean, the offensive line, Colorado State, we saw it. They exposed the offensive line. Shore Sanders did not have the time to throw the football that he had against TCU in Nebraska. And defensively, they were really pushed around by CSU, okay? So, you know, there, there are some things that this team needs to shore up and work on, but I'll tell you the, the inspirational leader of Deion Sanders, what he does, he gets three-star players to play like four-star players. He gets four-star players to play like five-star players. And when you're playing against 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, that stuff really matters. So they're punching above their weight. So yes, does Oregon have a more talented team, a more complete roster? Absolutely. Could Deion Sanders and this team come together and be so motivated, ready, and pull off an upset, Eugene? For sure. We saw it happen against TCU. They were three touchdown dogs. And they won that game, right? So I do believe anything's possible. But no, I don't I don't think a national championship's in the conversation this year. Right. And that TCU game obviously is the game where everyone was sort of woken up to the fact like, hey, these guys are good. Right now they are good. Uh it's, it's so so fun to watch. With obviously the success, Jeremy, you know. I'm sure there are going to be uh, hundreds of teams, dozens, maybe hundreds of teams out there who are going to say, let's make a run at Deion Sanders. Let's try and get together as much money as we possibly can and bring this guy in because we want for our program like Colorado has had for theirs. How do you keep him in Colorado, in, in Boulder? You got to get a new deal in front of him. I've been vocal about that on Twitter and inside the circles of CU and outside. Anybody who's willing to listen, 
you got to put a new deal in front of him. It's got to be a long-term deal. It's got to be up there with the highest paid coaches in the country. A lot of how has to have multiple revenue streams, not ticket prices, merchandise sales, TV revenue shares. It's sort of the Lionel Messi deal, right? You got to put that in front of him because right now the buyout is just too small. Any team can come together, get a bunch of boosters, buy him out and give him some long-term deal. Now he goes on TV and says, I don't care about the money. I'm going to get comfortable here in Colorado. I don't want to coach in the NFL. I don't buy any of it. And not because I think he's being disingenuous. I've just seen it happen at all different levels. That's what coaches say. They feel it in the moment until someone new comes to them and says, we're going to bet the whole farm on you. Here's what it looks like. We're so and then you start thinking differently. So I'm a big advocate of putting a new deal in front of him. Big, big deal, deal probably $166 million deal, 10-year deal, um, and wow. keeping him here and making the buyout untenable. $100 million buyout type, type, of, type of numbers. I was going to ask, do you have any billionaire alum from Colorado? Oh, we, we've got plenty of supporters here. We, we have so many supporters in Colorado that went to the University of Colorado. That's so happy to see our university being talked about every single day on TV, even folks that don't care about football. Again, yeah. this is bigger than football. We have the money. We can raise the, raise the money. We just need, we need some support, uh, you know, from Dion to say that's what he wants to do. And of course, like I'm not the AD, I'm not in those circles. So I know I'm not making those decisions. I'm just an excited supporter, alum fan that wants to make this happen and certainly willing to contribute to the cause. I said on Twitter, I'm willing to give a hundred grand today in order to put that forth to a, to a long-term deal. And I know there's tons of other people like, like myself that would give that and, and, and even more.